All right, so last video, I got a little excited uh, and jumped ahead a little bit. I'm going to go back into choir, all right? And we're going to go back into classwork because that is the only place where you can post an assignment. All right, and I'm going to create an assignment. And let's create a music theory assignment like I started to, all right? So we're going to do uh, note naming, treble clef, all right? Uh, we're going to do 30 questions. We are going to assign it to the whole class for all students. Okay. And uh, we are going to make it due on the 15th. And I'm going to make a topic, a new topic for next marking period. Um, classwork, marking period three. And then this is something, uh, and then I'm going to hit this link button. Okay, so let me back up. I can attach, I can attach an attachment. So that's going to be something from my computer, something from my desktop, right, from my hard drive. I can attach something from my drive, which of course can be anything. I could search my drive, my entire drive. I can use share drives that people have shared with me. Okay, or I could share something from YouTube. All right, just got to put in the URL. Or I can share a link. We're going to share a link today. All right. As you see, I have this tab over here, musictheory.net. This is an incredible website for music educators. Uh, it allows you to um, really gear an assignment towards what your kids are working on. It has um, ear training along with written work. All right. So you, you can toss a lesson in there. Like let's say you're absent, you can use that for subplans. That's really cool. It explains it. It's annotated and animated rather. Um, but we're going to go to exercises. So click on that. These are all practice things that kids can do on their own. But if you want to set the parameters, you really want to go to the bottom of the page where it says for teachers. And you're going to hit exercise customizer. When you click on that, you have a myriad of options, staff identification, staff construction, keyboard identification, fret identification if you teach guitar, okay, ear training, which is awesome. All right, so great, great resource. I love this website. Can't say enough great things about it. All right, so we said we were going to do treble clef. So note identification, obviously. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to pick the clefs I want. I just want treble, which happens to already be uh, selected. But if you look at this, this is awesome. If you're doing AP theory, even you can have kids practice the alto and tenor clef. If you're a strings teacher, you can have your violists practice the alto clef and so on and so forth. All right, then I'm going to check my range. All right, I want them to know at least, at least two ledger lines above the staff and below the staff. If you have a student that's special ed, that can't handle going past the acronyms, you can I, adjust that. And then you can assign that to that specific student, which I will show you after I assign this, how to differentiate instruction on Google Classroom, which is really, really cool. All right, so I'm gonna go back. I want them to know the lines and spaces. I want them only to do it in C major. I don't wanna confuse them. All right, I'm not gonna put the accidentals on today. It's the first day. They just learn the notes, no accidentals. But if you want accidentals, it'll give you sharps and flats. No double sharps, no double flats. It'll just give you sharps and flats. And then challenge mode is where you can set the parameters. You can say, okay, I want kids to try it more than once. If you do that, it messes with the grade. Okay, so for example, if there's 30 questions and a kid attempts one of the questions five times, it'll say 35 that the kid did 35 questions. So I don't really like to do that. And then our question, let me just literally just pull and drag. So we said 30 questions. All right. And then I can go back, double check everything. All right. And then here, down here, where you see this exercise is permanently available at, this is the link that's specifically and individually created for this assignment that I've made. So if I click on that, it's going to open up a new window for me or a new screen. This says high score because I've assigned this assignment before. Okay, but the kids, if they haven't had it, they won't, they, that won't, it won't look like that for them. It'll just say start challenge. Okay, so I'm gonna control C to copy 
the link, the URL up here. And I'm going to go back to Google Classroom and I'm going to control V and attach the link for them. Now, kids, you see, this is how it looks for the kids. Now I can assign it right now or I can schedule it for a later date. Let's say I'm going to be absent tomorrow. I'm going to schedule it or today's the 10th of January. I'm going to, it's due the 15th. So I'm going to schedule it for the 15th. And let's say my class starts at 8 a.m., but I don't want them to see the assignment until uh, a little bit later in the class, 8.30. And I can hit schedule. This is so cool. This is a great feature. It'll show up gray in the classwork section, and then it'll tell me when it's scheduled for. If I make a mistake, I can hit these three dots, edit, delete. I can view the assignment, edit the assignment. I can see what the kids see. Now, let's say I have a student in my class that is um, special ed. This student is not special ed, okay? I'm just giving an example. The student is actually an honor student. But uh, let's just say that uh, this student here happens to be special ed. I can take her off of this so that she won't even see this. And then I can go back into here, I just hit the back arrow, into musictheory.net. And she can't handle 30 questions. It's too much for her. So I'm going to go back. She can't handle accidentals. She's special ed. I'm going to give her only 15 questions. I am going to take away the ledger lines. Oops. And I am going to give her a visual aid. I can either attach that visual aid electronically or I can give it to her on paper, which would probably be more beneficial for a student that's special ed. All right, depending on, of course, their IEP. So then I just click this new link here. And now I've created this new assignment specific just for the needs of this particular student. Okay, so I'm going to save this other one, schedule this one for everyone in the class, and it'll say how many kids are getting it. You saw that said 16 students. So then, now I want to make, make this assignment for my special ed student. I'm going to hit reuse post because I'm going to use the one I just did. I'm going to go and make sure I'm in the right class. Red day, block one, no name and trouble class. Reuse that. And then I'm going to delete the link because I want to put in a new link just for this specific student. Okay, add link. Her assignment, as you remember, was only 15, oh, excuse me, 15 questions. Going too fast here. I do have to put the due date the same. Okay, the topic is automatically saved. I don't want everyone to see this assignment. I don't want everyone to know that she got a different assignment. And the coolest thing is, because they're on their Chromebook, no one will know that her assignment is different. No one in the class will know. Also, kids can't cheat because the computer is generating the questions. And so each student is getting a different question at a different time, which is awesome. And I'm going to schedule her assignment at the same time that I scheduled the other kids on the 15th at 8.30 a.m. Now, when, now I have two of them. However, my special ed student will only have this one and everyone else in the class will only have this one. And that is a great way to differentiate instruction for your special ed students uh, that can still handle um, an electronic assignment. It's really, really great. And no one will be the wiser. Now, the reason why I love this website so much, I'm going to go into a previous assignment so that you can see, is because students attach their link. I'm just going to click on this. Students attach their link and it's graded for me. There it is. There's this grade. I don't have to go in and grade it. I will show you how to attach the grade in the next video.